Alcohol is one of many addictive substances, and for a substance to be addictive, it has to change the way that the brain functions. When we take alcohol into the body, it's absorbed by the digestive system and released into the blood circulation, and from there it can go on to have many wide-ranging effects through other organs in the body. But the rate of absorption can actually differ depending on many factors, and one of these is whether you've recently eaten any food before you drank your alcohol. If you have, this can slow down the rate of absorption, and this is why it's recommended that you never drink alcohol on an empty stomach. To get to the brain, alcohol has to cross the blood-brain barrier. This is a protective cell layer that sits between your blood vessels and the brain tissue. But once it's done this, it can start affecting neuronal function. Neurons are the brain cells that send messages and one of the ways they do this uses chemicals called neurotransmitters. So why is alcohol addictive? For a substance to be addictive, it has to increase the level of a neurotransmitter called dopamine deep in an area in the middle of the brain called the mesolimbic dopamine system. Dopamine is our so-called pleasure chemical, so it's increased whenever we do anything that's thought to be addictive. But alcohol also tastes nice because it's derived from sugar and research has shown that this liking of the taste of alcohol happens because alcohol also increases activity of another type of neurotransmitter called opioids. Now this might sound really confusing since dopamine is known as our pleasure chemical, yet opioids signal liking something. But there's quite an important difference here. Dopamine drives our wanting of alcohol and our craving for it, whereas opioids tell us we've liked it if we've actually drunk it. But that's not all alcohol can do to the brain. It's also well known for decreasing our inhibitions. On the one hand, this might be something we deliberately seek out. After all, drinking alcohol might make us feel more social, particularly if we're shy. But there's a negative aspect to the loss of inhibition that can also be very dangerous. Alcohol also increases our propensity to take risks, and so the more we drink, the less inhibited we can become. Alcohol does this by dampening down activity in an area of the brain called the prefrontal cortex. And in psychology, this area is thought of as our central executive. So it's kind of the seat of our logical, reasoned, rational behavior. And by dampening down activity in this area, alcohol is effectively gagging this voice of reason. So if you've ever woken up after a good night out, after maybe more than a drink or two, and you feel really embarrassed by something silly that you've said or done, you can thank alcohol for its effects on the prefrontal cortex. In addition to these effects, alcohol is also capable of dulling sensory processing, and this includes processing of painful stimuli. One way that alcohol achieves these pain-relieving effects seems to be by increasing opioid activity in the spinal cord. Opiate drugs like morphine are well-known painkillers, so-called because they also act on the opioid receptors. One of the other known effects of alcohol is that it can make you feel quite warm. Indeed, some people can become visibly flushed in the face or in the neck after just a drink or two. Alcohol does this because it causes your blood vessels to dilate, increasing the flow of blood, particularly in those vessels that are close to the skin's surface. As it happens, this is where most of your thermoreceptors are. And these are the cells that are capable of detecting temperature. The warm brush of blood is picked up by these cells, and so you feel warm. In truth, your core temperature is decreasing because dilating surface blood vessels is a means of cooling the body. In addition, the facial flushing reaction is quite an important one to be aware of. And this is because it relates to how good your body is at metabolizing alcohol. The first step is the breakdown of alcohol into acetylaldehyde. If you flush easily in response to alcohol, you're actually very good at this first step. However, you're not so good at further metabolizing the acetylaldehyde. And so it builds up within the body, and unfortunately it's a toxic substance, so it can cause damage to the body's cells. Therefore, if you do flush easily, you're unfortunately thought to be more at risk of developing alcohol-related cancers. On a more positive note, you're less at risk of developing alcohol addiction. And of course, this is because the dopamine is not increased in response to alcohol, because the alcohol is around for less time in the brain. In sum, alcohol's effects on the brain cause us to want to consume it, and then to like it when we do. But it's a very dangerous substance, and we should bear this in mind before we take that first sip.
get more from the Open University, check out the links on screen now.